Hi guys, this is Charlie Montotiel with Blue Bear Flutes, of course. Our website, bluebearflutes.com, and our Instagram is under Blue Bear Flutes. If you haven't seen Instagram yet, please, just for a crying out loud, check it out. I know a lot of you aren't Instagram type people. I'm not either, but I've got to tell you, the stuff that we have on our Instagram is just incredibly amazing. I like to look at it myself, and once again, I know I've said before, I'm not trying to be vain or anything, but just seeing the flutes that we've made and the places we've been and the people we've met and the things we've done, Oh my gosh, it's it's really nice. They do a really good job of keeping everything in like chronological order as comparison to Facebook where you can see everything that everybody in the world's done and then here's something Charlie did and here's something everybody else plus about 40 ads. Anyway, so uh, don't forget to check out our Facebook as well if you get a chance. But today, uh, as you know, we like to make a lot of Native American flutes and we have, well, I say we like to make a lot of them. We like to make Native American flutes and coincidentally we make just a gob of them. But today what we're doing is something I've been waiting to do for some time and that is I've noticed a lot of people making tables with uh, rotted wood and resin inlays and so I wanted to put something together that was a Native American flute made in that particular type of idea and mindset. So because I'm not really into making tables, although my dad made lots and lots of tables and made some with resin back in the day, he really kind of pioneered some of this stuff, um, I've never really been one to want to make a resin table. It sounds like a neat idea, something I might would consider for the future, but when I look at this piece of wood, all I see is a bunch of wasted wood that I couldn't use to make a flute. And in the case of this and resin, now I think maybe I should use this wasted wood to make a flute. Uh, having said that, when I was ripping out some blanks uh, a little while back, I come across this one piece of red cedar here, which has some major rot, and I went ahead and ripped it hoping that maybe I'd be able to salvage this piece, and I looked at it, and, and honestly, neither piece is, is really quite good enough to make a flute out of uh, by itself, and for that reason, and, and I probably should stop at that point and say, you know, red cedar actually can rot. Most people aren't aware of that. It's slow to rot, and that's the reason that, you know, it's used for fence posts, and the reason that you find red cedar flutes from a thousand years ago. Uh, it's because it is very slow to rot. There's some chemicals inside of it that just make it last for a long time. And why you have everything from coffins to door handle or doors and handles and, you know, some of everything you can imagine. People build houses and steam rooms and saunas. And, and uh, I think I've even seen at least one red cedar car before. Um, and, of course, back in the day there were... Uh, made out of the uh, uh, sequoias. I've seen log cabins and motorhomes and things built out of this because it's a very durable and long-lasting, doesn't really want to rot type of wood. Having said all that, oh, of course, a lot of uh, seafaring vessels have cedar on the inside to keep their place looking pretty and smelling good as well. But having said this, uh, it does really rot, and uh, it can rot from a number of reasons. It, usually it's the white part of the wood, Red cedar has a white and a dark. Let's see, here's a good representation of it. Usually the white's on the outside, but not always. Sometimes there's striations of it through the inside of the wood. I've got some pieces I've been saving and working on that, that uh, are like that. Uh, I was looking to see if I had them back there behind me, but I don't. Anyway, uh, so the white part is usually what gets eaten by termites or bacteria or worms in some cases. Um, and for that reason, it'll usually leave the red heart which is most of the wood is kind of a red color in the inside, eastern red cedar anyway. Um, but um, sometimes where the striations run through it, the worms or termites or bugs or whatever might have eaten it. And uh, anyway, they leave kind of a rotted little shape to it there. If you've ever been walking in the woods and seen an old tree laying down that had like, um, I don't know, like folds coming out of it that's laying on the ground and it's been there, that's usually a cedar tree, or at least in my experience it has been, and those folds were actually the red part living inside of the white part of the wood. And it's gotten weathered, sometimes rained on or whatever, and it causes it to uh, uh, kind of rot away like that, except it ex leaves the inside of it, which is usually what a lot of people use for fence posts back 100 years ago. Anyway, long story short, uh, this is going to be my resin little flute here project. And there are some spots that are like rotted but they're not completely out of the wood so the wood is holding like I guess some residue in there and I just wanted to clean some of that out um, here's some spots right here that 
that are like rotted wood that are hanging around for whatever reason. Anyway, since we're making a flute out of this, just like they do all those beautiful tables, it's one of my woodworking buddies makes some really amazing stuff like this as well. And of course, my dad used to do that as well. He uh, made tables and clocks and all kinds of stuff. I'm making a mess here in my clean work area. But uh, anyway, um, when dad used to do this kind of thing, I noticed that uh, the parts where the resin were located, where the rot was just completely eat away inside of the wood, those parts where the resin was, you know, more predominant and less wood visible, those are the parts I thought looked really cool because you could see in it and see everything that was going on in there and what have you. So I figured using something that had more rot spots might lead to an opportunity to have more visible inside of the flute. I and mean, who wouldn't want that, right? So that's not too bad. You can see there were some bug holes in this. So obviously, uh, during the rotting process, some of the bugs get to where they can gnaw on it a little bit easier. It gets soft enough and washes away some of the uh, cedar oil that is undoubtedly toxic to them. Not so much to us. Okay, so that's that. And let's see, blow some of this mess off. You close your eyes for a minute. Hope you had your safety goggle on. So now I've got these two pieces of wood that match up, and I can tell they match up because the little knot holes here, and there's a little spot there and a spot here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tape this off so that I can fill it. I'm going to lay it down flat so that the what is going to become the inside of the flute is poking outward, and then we'll uh, we'll fill it up with some resin, maybe even give it a little splash of color if we can, and, and uh, see what that does for us here. Okay, so I've got it all taped off pretty much how I wanted to. So when the tape pushes in to form fit inside of an area, sometimes you have to poke it back out to get it to work. If you notice, I use some actual ducting tape. This aluminum tape is the stickiest and does hold its uh, shape really well. Uh, when Dad used to do this kind of stuff, sometimes he'd tape things off, sometimes he wouldn't. Usually if he did, he spent like forever like a painter trying to get it exactly how he wanted it. Um, in my case, because I know what I'm working with and I've got a little excess wood that I can cut down and kind of work around and all this kind of stuff, I think I'm okay there. And um, the resin I'm using, just kind of a general resin, Pro Marine Supplies brand, epoxy uh, resin, and um, just something I got kind of quick online, I guess. Uh, then I thought about using some of this pearlescent um, turquoise colored paint in there. It's kind of a metallic acrylic and uh, you know probably there are a bunch of other things I could use instead of that for this particular 
build, but I wanted to use something kind of simple and something that uh, was just, you know, laying around really because that's what makes this the best project is the fact that I'm using a piece of wood I wouldn't have been able to use in the first place. And in addition to that, the uh, resin here is just like I said, some excess that I had fortunately found online for another project or two. There we go. And I'm going to do this the old-fashioned measuring way. I think Dad used to do it the same method. So we're going to use a little bit of this. Okay, that's about enough of that. And a little bit of that. You see me do this in another project, I'll probably be using measuring cups, but since they have such a uh, nice laid out, equally measured amount, <laughs> I can just do it like that. Anyway, mix this stuff together, and I think I have probably like 20, 30 minutes before it becomes any kind of a problem. And we can't use too much of this paint in here, but I figured just a little bit of color probably wouldn't hurt it any. Let's see what this looks like. And that might be the stuff right there. Let's take a look down inside of this. Most of you are thinking, wow, is that what the inside of a table saw looks like? Okay, just a little bit more. Not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of color there. I watched my friend Scott do this on a couple of tables and this is like the amount of work you can put into any resin fill is nearly limitless. Let me straighten this one little piece out right here. Piece out. There we go. Now, I think that turned out kind of a nice shimmering little color. It had just enough metal flake in it that it's shiny and it's blue. I mean, it's just, I think this is going to be great. Now I should probably let y'all watch me pour this mess, right? Good thing about using this really liquid resin is that it wants to seep into and find every crack and crevice. Notice it's still running there as it levels out and probably finds the level of my table saw. <laughs> Let's put just a little drippity doodab right here and never fear I'm actually going to plane the surface of this down before I run it through my router so no worries on that front just a little bit there it is nighttime so you might see a couple of nighttime little critters running around When my friend Scott does this, he uh, he's used everything for color. I've watched him use an ink pen and gosh, uh, different kinds of uh, paint to give it a nice particular color he was looking for. And just as I planned it, here are some thin pieces of wood to help level this out. How about that? I can't believe I planned all of this stuff out. Let's give it just a little bit more. Sorry, I gotta pour it towards me. You can see what I'm doing here. And I don't think think that this resin has any level of shrinkage, so I don't need to overfill. Like I say, my plan is to come back and plane it off anyway after it hardens. Let's see where we're at. How's that looking? Looks like we need to come up another couple of clicks. 
Let's come up just a smidgen. I if that's got us. Well, it looks like we're a little dry back here on the back end still. And boy, is it looking neat up inside of there, ain't it? So now we gotta wait until it cures a little bit. Um, I'm gonna let it harden overnight and then I'm gonna come back and probably fill just a couple of spots that I see leak through. Um, and then after that, supposedly 72 hours, I'm probably more of like a 24 to 48 hours kind of guy. But we'll have to see how, how tacky it is and what it cures out like. The weather can affect it. Um, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but there's some little bubbles coming out of it. Um, back before the bottle ever said to use a torch to get the air bubbles out of it, Dad figured out to use a torch to get the air bubbles out of it. And unfortunately, uh, during the process of heating this stuff up with a torch, it puts out some vapors. I mean, it's like we're always dealing with vapors here in the shop. But uh, it puts out some vapors that uh, are really pretty, pretty bad. So you don't want to be around it while it's curing out. You want to give it time to air out and whatever. Um, but I feel like if we come back tomorrow, we're going to see a major uh, a major change in the hardness of the structure and how it's you know everything's turned out so I think we should be in good shape at that point and we'll be able to plane it down and get it going as far as uh, making a blank out of it probably tomorrow night maybe maybe the next day so see you then okay so we've got the resin and everything set up for several days now as you may have told or can tell the uh, shop has changed its shape and even got a different planer sitting over here that we're going to be using and a lot of different stuff has changed but I think I've come out with some pretty nice little blanks out of the deal now because the resin leaked a little bit and started to change where it was at I had to reinforce it with some different tape I put a piece of wood on it which is currently stuck um, I think I can hammer or chisel that one off but uh, when I run it through the planer, I'm going to try to reshape it and get everything exactly how it needs to be. So let's see if we can peel any of this tape off.
Okay, so now that I've got some presentable halves, I do see there's some spots in my resin did not fill in, which I'm going to go and fill in really quick. But I think this side is the side I want to be the side with my fingerings. A little bit of tape still there. But uh, I think this is going to be the coolest presentation side. This other side hasn't got as much resin on it after you get down to the nitty gritty. Whereas this one's probably a third of the way gone and filled in with resin. So I really can't wait to see what this thing looks like. I'm going to go ahead and mark it and drill it. I shaped it a little bit differently. I'm going to make it a little bit more old school uh, fluid out of it. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it and drill it. And then I'm going to fill these spots in and glue it together. I'm not going to burn the inside of it like I usually do. Um, I don't think that will benefit us any because it may affect the resin in a negative way. Well, let's see where that takes us. Looks like there's a spot here that didn't fill in with resin. I'm going to go back and fill in with some sawdust and glue uh, so that I can get this finished in a reasonable amount of time. But it looks like the more I planed it off, the, the better the resin showed up. And I feel like when I round it off, it's going to do the same thing. Uh, just, I mean, right now it looks pretty incredible. I know it's hard to see beyond just like stuck tape and, you know, this, that, and the other. But, but uh, I've made so many flutes that I see what it looks like it's going to become and it's just so far I'm very impressed I can't wait to, to finish it up um, but uh, from here on it's standard standard you know uh, thick finishing the sound hole rounding it off sanding it nice and smooth um, many of you that have watched a lot of our videos probably know that I don't make a whole lot of six hole flute videos simply because I don't want to confuse people with the type that you keep your finger covering on this hole which is virtually a five hole flute um, and the type that we make. Um, but uh, those of you who, of course, have the argument that, you know, it has six holes, therefore it's a six hole flute. Well, if I cover the sixth hole on a modern six hole flute up, I can still play that note that's under my finger there with alternate fingerings, which is how I played on a five hole flute, if I ever need to play that note. Once again, that note is a, it's a chromatic note. It's a half step note. It's not one that's in the minor pentatonic scale. And regardless of what mode you want to learn to play your flute in or any of this stuff that you may have learned or heard from someone else, you can play a five-hole flute, you can play a four-hole flute the same exact way. Um, the difference between the others and the six-hole flute is we have another note up here, which there again, you play with a different set of fingerings. But the reason I wanted to make this one into this type of uh, old-school six-hole flute is simply because um, the style with the the rotted wood and everything. I, I just wanted to, to give it some life, some kind of modern with the old type thing. I did make the mouthpiece a little bit longer too, and of course the flute itself is a little bit longer simply because there again of the type of flute it is. But uh, we'll finish this off and, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing instrument one way or the other, but uh, at this point I'm kind of excited and can't wait to see what happens.
Okay, so I'm really pleased with it so far. I've sent it down eventually to 400 grit uh, sandpaper. I'm really kind of impressed by this piece of aluminum tape that's still stuck in here too. It's, it's kind of shiny and I, I decided some time back that I should leave that in there because it looked pretty cool. But uh, you can't see it right now, but when I look inside of it like this, you can see through it, it's clear. Um, we're actually talking about some way of displaying it so that you can see the translucence of the, of the material. And uh, most of the rest of this, you've seen me making other videos. Uh, that's the reason that we've sped through so much of this one is just for the sake of, you know, I've made flutes so many times in videos that I wanted to make something unusual. I'll let you guys kind of follow along with me during the process uh, so that you can get out of it. What I've gotten out of it is pretty cool so far. Uh, in the end, my biggest goal is to make sure that it plays good and that it has a really nice look to it, a nice appearance that shows off what I was trying to achieve here. Uh, like I say, currently, pretty pretty happy with the, the look of it. Um, it won't really show up until I'm finished and it's oiled, but we'll see here in just a moment. You notice too, I've got a few fans blown on me because I don't want this vapor to uh, to get around me too much because there's a lot of resin in that that I'm burning. Should really not be burning that resin. something that wasn't terribly unexpected because of the amount of holes and pores and so much to deal with in this thing. The flute is not producing a good sound for me, which means that the pores are allowing too much air to escape. There's some tiny little holes right here you can see. Those little guys, there's some along the edge here, there's one right there. I'm gonna go in and seal this flute from the inside and see if that'll fix it otherwise. Plays one note. This tells me that the air leak is probably around this area right here. And I've looked and I don't see any major holes there. Most of the holes are up, up here, like I said. So I'm going to seal it from the inside. And then we'll be back to tune it here in just a second. Once again, tuning it by ear, not by tuner. Okay, so I sealed it inside and it only took a few seconds. I used a lot of extra super glue, probably didn't have to use three tubes, but I, I thought, you know, I wanna make sure this thing has got it and check out the difference. So close. The vapors are still coming off of it, so it's a little bit on the much. I need to burn the holes out a little bit larger. vapors are no fun. I'll tell you, one of my friends and fellow flute makers 
had a terrible run-in with him where it affected him in such a way that he had to be hospitalized for a little while because of the amount of vapors he was getting off of it. So they are nothing to trifle at. Vapors right there. just a smidgen. Not making them any larger now, just cleaning the excess shape out of them. It does look really cool, especially inside. I might run my sanding rod back through for just a quick second, and then I'm going to have to make some kind of block for it. I'm not sure what the totem I'm going to put on it is yet. Um, I need to make something that still reflects what I was trying to achieve here, and I've got to sand a little bit of the super glue off the side of it with some 400. So that'll take me just a second. We'll be back to display the finished product here momentarily, and uh, like I said, next I'm going to oil it, I'm going to wax it, just like I do all of our flutes, and then I'm going to um, make it a nice block and come back and let you guys hear what it sounds like for real. All right. So this thing turned out pretty amazing. I don't know if telling you how amazing it is or even showing you um, in the video or even a good picture is going to tell you or show you what it really looks like in person. It's incredible. From the video, I'm sure you can see there are bits of wood here and striations of the resin that we put in there. But when you look at it up close, especially in the right light, you can actually see that there's layers of wood missing and present um, throughout the flute. It just turned out really amazing. Um, these dark spots that you see right here are actually some of the rotted wood that melded and solidified with the resin. This is a fill that I did, which I'm very pleased with. I was afraid that it wasn't going to blend in or look good, but it's exactly what I wanted. So it turned out perfect. And uh, just really overall, the finish... The way it looks, I might go back and oil and wax it a couple more times so that it maintains some of its luster. But you can really, if you can see the wood underneath of that resin there, looks really incredible. But uh, the entire piece from top to bottom, there's a little circle here of where the resin comes up behind a knot hole, or rather a knot that had a rotted spot out the side of it. So like I said, a little bit more buffing. A little bit more finishing uh, with some oil and wax. This side, not so much. Kind of plain Jane. One little neat looking spot there. And uh, as I mentioned, we're thinking about making a stand that I can set it down in that will keep a light going through it. Even just a dim one, I think, would really give us some nice effect. Um, I'm very pleased with it anyway, to say the least. So a good little project, something completely different, not something that's the usual or the the regular, see if you can see any more of that, the light. I should have probably brought another light to show it, but it won't be the last time that you see this one. Um, you'll actually see this one on our Instagram a few more times um, as we do some final touches with it. So make sure you check out our Instagram, which is Blue Bear Flutes. 
just like our website and our YouTube channel. Um, otherwise, I'll just stand here and play it for a minute. We kind of startled a blue heron on our way here and a uh, another couple of fishing birds. So <laughs> I want to kind of apologize to them for doing that and maybe give them something to, to listen to for a minute too.